Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new health care program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, it's Wendy K. Ladle here. I hope that this podcast finds you well. Today, uh, the subject is about darkness into the light. I know when I was in the depths and the darkness of my endometriosis, I never thought there was going to be a way out. I was on that medical machine. I was doing the painkillers, the dogs, the surgery, thinking that was a route. I just had to hit harder, work faster, find a different doctor, a different drug, different surgical procedure, and that would that would heal my endometriosis. That would get rid of it for me. It didn't work for me. And I'm assuming if you're listening to this, it's not working for you either. So it's brilliant that you're here. But I thought I would just, I was being a bit reflective recently because I just had my 50th birthday and I was thinking how out of the darkness I came into the light and I came into color. Um, I'd spent, I, I rediscovered so many different aspects about myself, which I kind of wanted to share today. I look back and I think I spent so much of my first 50 years of my life wishing that I wasn't alive, wishing I would, could be free of the pain. I wish I could die. And it's so sad looking back. But that's true. That's, that's, that was my thinking. That was my story. That was the only way that I thought I could escape the pain. And so many times I was racked with pain that I just wanted to escape from it. And I'm sure you identify with this if you've had that searing pain that has flared up and knocked your breath away. The physical pain, the emotional pain, the relational pain, the psychological pain. I was just one big bag of pain. My whole life eluded pain. Pain from the present, pain from the past, and the total dread and overwhelming fear of the future. Do you relate to that? Is that where you're at right now? And of course, there were the most magical small windows of light in the majority of the darkness. I was repeatedly told that I would never have any children because of my endometriosis, because it has so ravaged my body and I was in such a bad way. I'd had a threatened miscarriage, but I was also blessed to give birth to my beautiful daughter Maxine and my handsome son Sebastian nine years later and equally I should say but with only part of one ovary left and both fallopian tubes damaged so remember what they say doctors don't know it all their births were the happiest days of my life yet as the years went on the darkness would sometimes all consume me and the dark partners that I was around project onto me that my children might even be better off without me that, that beratement, these put downs, the, the silences. And as I reached my landmark birthday of 50 years old, half a decade, it sounds so old, doesn't it? It seems fitting to look back briefly and see what I've learned. I have to say that my life has changed dramatically in these past few years. And this is why I do what I do now is sharing my journey and my success and other women's success with you all. Gone is the endless, fruitless desire to be this people pleaser. Uh, Do you relate to that? Do you feel like you're constantly trying to keep everyone happy at the expense of yourself? Well, that was me. That drained me the most, that earnestness to keep others happy, which I recognize now looking back at the cost of myself. I would be able to anticipate someone else's needs way above my own. To be honest, I don't even know what my own needs were except to keep everyone happy. I would recount, I would anticipate If they were happy, I'm happy. I would say, if you're happy, I'm happy. Yeah, I deep down, I I wasn't happy. I was very, very unhappy. I was stuck in this vat of treacle, trying to trudge my way through the day, every day. And it used to suck me down into the deep depths of despair. I suffered terribly from depression after my daughter was born. I'd suffered a threatened miscarriage early on, as I mentioned. And then she was born four weeks prematurely. The first time my eyes bestowed upon her, I fell in love. It was then and only then that I understood for the first time what love really was. I knew I would fall on a sword for her, kill for her, lift a bus off her and swim across the ocean for her. And I had never experienced that love before. But it also took off the rose-coloured spectacles of what I had grown up in. 
their definition of love. My upbringing was marred with the old family mantra that my mother had had to fall pregnant and had to have me, i.e. she didn't want me or my brother, and that I had ruined her TV pop career. I was reminded regularly that she didn't want children. I grew up wishing to be invisible, yet wanting to shine but wanting to hide, wanting to fix and make everyone happy. I was the one who got things done and pulled giraffes out of hats, forget rabbits out of hats. But deep down the realisation of love for this beautiful little being that was my daughter and then my son that I had almost lost opened up a deep crevasse in my soul. The love for my daughter made it shockingly clear that I had not been loved by my parents. That's when the first wave of deep depression hit me, that shocking impact and awareness of a unit that I could not have seen before. And what that meant about me. You see, when we are little, we have to fit in. We're fully dependent on our family for survival within the family unit. It's a law of the pack, the law of primal survival. Fit in or die, literally, in the golden, olden days. No youngster's psyche can comprehend that it is not wanted. A blight, a nuisance or an irritant. It's very hard for any individual, however old or however young, to comprehend that. It switches off those parts of itself that senses or instinctively feels those feelings. It has to for its own survival in a hostile family environment. A family environment is supposed to feel safe. So the full impact of 25 years of switching off my instincts hit me hard. It was unfathomable to comprehend whilst faced with the overwhelming love I had for my firstborn. I have since, I've learned since then that to get that love from myself. Obviously, as most people do, I searched externally. I had a few relationships that I recognize now were to try and rewrite history in some way, but not anymore. My last relationship did almost fulfill the old dying wish. The cruelty and what I now know to be called emotional and psychological abuse was incredibly toxic to my body, rendering me bedridden and disabled for almost three years. But I would not change a single element of my journey. It has made me who I am today and helped me relate to women who have had similar experiences and gently guide them out of the physical pain, but importantly to discover what real love is for themselves from themselves. There are some deeply toxic and bad people that roam through our society and sometimes they may be our parents, they may be family members. It's through no fault of our own that they projected false and cutting false identity onto you, yet you may carry the deep scars as chronic pain in your body, mind and spirit. Journaling helped me to gently hear all my parts that were hurting. Journaling allowed me to be heard for the first time in my life, heard me for me. Meditation allowed me to come into my highly anxious, unsettled body and allow it to relax and heal. Prayer helped me to hear my own callings and fears. Taking great care of what I ate, what I put on my skin and being mindful of my environment and toxic people around me allowed my body to heal and put my stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis and cysts into remission. And employing the supportive services of an experienced counsellor, someone who understood trauma and the insidious abuse that prevailed in our society that slowly eroding the spirit and the soul, wishing the host to die and be free of pain. That is no life for anyone. Counselling allowed me to go back to visit the ghosts of my past safely and gently whilst living day to day. In particular, eye movement desensitisation and reprocessing, abbreviated as EMDR, was developed by Francine Shapiro and allows for the expert processing of old trauma so it can be released from the body, mind and spirit. Kind of like putting the past to rest. For me, it took almost three years to process my past. I was a stubborn client and so terrified of being overwhelmed. But now as I approach my 50th birthday or having just passed it, I'm excited. I look ahead to the new horizons and continue my new way of being and living. My children are my greatest source of happiness and joy. It's not been an easy road, but the feeling of wishing death to escape has long since gone with the processing of the past trauma. Now I am mindful and appreciate the little things, the little moments and the little joys. I thank God every day for my blessings. 
My lessons have been tough at times, but it has given me the compassion and understanding to help others, other women out of their endometriosis pain as well. Wherever you are in your healing endometriosis journey, it is the right place for you at the right time for you. Please be extra kind to yourself. Be mindful of what is impacting your body, your heart and soul and reach out to a safe person for help and support if you need it. It takes more strength to ask for help than not. To your health. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one so the world needs a healthy you.